Lemon Amiga present. A Play Diet video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi there, once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Warhead, and that was developed by Glyn Williams and released by Motion Picture House in early 1990. The game begins with some atmospheric music and the cinematic theme reminds me of Elite Frontier 2. So we do get some atmospheric music at the start of the game. This review was sponsored by Sepp from Lemon Amiga, who nominated this as one of his two games that he got at the gold level of backer. You get two games to nominate, and so this was one of them. And I got this game on copy in 1992, and it's taken me 20 years to get off the very first level. I've been trying to learn this game and trying to beat it forever and ever, and so thanks to Sepp and his funding, I've now got through this game, or at least further than I got before. After the introduction, we're given a mission briefing, and it's the year 2045, and aliens from Sirius are attacking Earth, and so the fist of Earth was set up to defend against all the foes from Sirius and you are a rookie and you are taken to Sol Base which is the base which guards the entire solar system of Earth. So you're taken all the way here as a rookie and this is your introduction to the game and welcome to your first tour of duty. So this the most disturbing aspect is we're going to be in conflict with an enemy and they are from Sirius and they are mean and ugly and they are based on critters from Earth like insects and nothing to do with the Aliens movies whatsoever. So those are insects and they've managed to build starships using all those legs and arms and all that technology that you need to fly a starship and so these things are what are attacking us so to summarize you're supposed to get rid of that enemy threat as best as possible. I think this introduction is a great introduction to the game and it's probably one of the freebies that they didn't have to include on this disc. Yes, this is a single disc, just like Elite Frontier. This is just one disc that contains an entire universe and we'll be getting through a few of the missions. There are maybe 20, 25 missions in the game. Like the game Civilization, it's great to see the space intro on offer, but let's just get to that conflict, and this is a mouse driven game, if we hold down that left mouse button we can speed through this text, and we don't have to read it at all. So we get some of the backstory of the aliens blowing up the planet, and over one million tons of weapons were deployed 
the Earth was devastated. So that's all we need to know about that. 12 years later, 12 years later, we get to the spearhead of this, which is at the Sol base. Here it is, the Sol base, which is a space station floating around in our solar system, which is the Sol system. And you are fighting with a 457 spacecraft. That's what we get to fly. 457 is the first workable interstellar fighter. And at the start, we are an absolute rookie in the game with no idea what we're supposed to be doing with it. Title screen gives us some more of that atmospheric music and a demo light effect in the background. After that, you get to the load and save screen. You'll have to be familiar with this during the game. When we start, we can press M to read the first message, D to read the data screens, and you can also press help to load and save, but only at the star base. And so, the soul base, welcome to the soul base, have fun out there. So, you can press help to load and save, but only whilst we've landed here. So let's check out those orders. First of all, you must familiarize yourself with the basic piloting of this spaceship. So what we can do, PWS, that means proceed with the mission. We can then press the L key to launch from the star base. And definitely the keys in this game are more important than the controls because you'll have to memorize the keys and how to pilot this ship. There are various also pilots on offer, and you'll have to be familiar with all of those. Definitely level 4 can be pressed on the keypad, and that puts us into level 4 mode, which gives us fine positioning. And fine positioning means we can press the left mouse button to move forward, and the right mouse button will put us in reverse thrust, which means we can line ourselves up with the markers you can see leading towards that soul base. We can press H for a heads up display like this, and that gives us an element of what we're supposed to be doing on the screen. And you can see outgoing sortie, we're supposed to read that. And we can also press the W key, which is very important because that brings up our tactical display. And when we've put the tactical display on, it means we can now lock on to targets. So targets aren't locked on until you enable the weapons. We can then press the space bar to lock onto any target and we've locked onto the very last navigation beacon on this chain, which means hopefully we can line ourselves up with that. Yes, you can see the sun there and a few planetary bodies floating around, but we're interested in the soul base at the moment. So you can see we can reverse thrust. And because we're on level 4, that's not too bad, but the drive mode's definitely important in this game because if you're on the wrong one, you'll simply speed off into the horizon and you'll leave the soul base miles behind. And then you'll have to turn around and find the soul base all over again, find the navigation markers all over again, start this off all over again. So what I'm actually doing at the moment is trying to practice and the aim of this driving lesson is we're supposed to fly the ship around and we're supposed to land it at the sole base. At any point you can press any number of one of these keys and we can't press Q to do the quad jump at the moment because we don't have the quad drive. So we can change the views, we can also press D to check out our computer and it gives us the technical specs of our spaceship. It's basically got stinger missiles, proximity mines and all these other things and you can check out the soul base as well. This is the directive, this is what we have to do, land at the soul base. And so this is Earth Defense Force, priority one, we'll have to land there and we'll also have to check out all the other things that we'll investigate as we get through the game, those will appear on that computer. So having lined ourselves up with the very last mark you can see, all that we need to do hopefully is to move through those markers in stages and we'll get to the base. And there's a new message, okay, 
you're a beginner, what exactly are you doing out there? What do you think you're doing out there? Well, I've no idea at the moment. And like I say, it's taken me 20 years to get off this very first mission because it's very difficult because the computer expects us to land at the soul base absolutely perfectly, just like a driving test, mirror signal and maneuver all the way there. Otherwise, it will say, sorry, you've not completed the mission. You'll have to do it again. And that's precisely where I ended up. Every time I tried to learn this game, every few years I'd put this game on and try to learn it again. And for years I thought that you had to press a button to get back into the soul base. But no, all you have to do is to fly into the proximity and then you'll get a cutscene. And you can see some random cutscene of us landing in the soul base. Unfortunately, we didn't follow the program directives, so we've now failed that mission. So let's try that again. FMO means message is available to read. And it's those shortcut signs on the screen that you definitely have to memorize. So let's fly away from Soul Base till we get another message. And it says, now bring the ship onto the Soul Base docking axis and stop near to the outermost navigation marker. Okay, well, let's put on, first of all, the tactical display, and then we can lock on to things. And then we can lock on to that last navigation marker. And now I'm using Autopilot 2 to sneak forward very slowly. You can see that there are very different options. Number two means we can point at the primary target. So having selected the primary target, we can then point directly to it and find position is number four and pursue primary target. Not quite sure what that means. Number five is slow thrust and number six is auto fly and then halt. Definitely when you exit any space station, press number six and then you will fly around and then halt. Pressing number 9 also does a very similar thing, so that means that we can balance ourselves wherever we are in this zero-g environment, and then it stops the spacecraft. So now I'm fine-tuning, we can fine-tune ourselves again with that last navigation marker, and hopefully if we've done that, here we go, we'll get another message. Now bring the ship along the main axis to the docking hub on the solar base. Unfortunately, even though I'm trying my best to control the ship, you can fly directly into it and it will blow up. That means you'll have to start it all over again, and so fast forwarding through some more footage, it's very easy to collide with the soul base, and it's very easy to get slightly off the navigation markers as well. And right at the end of this review, I'll be showing you a perfect glide along these navigation markers into the base. That's what they expect on this driving instructor simulator. You will have to get into that absolutely perfectly. Otherwise, you won't be able to go through to the next training mission, of which I think there are 10 in the game and we'll be getting through those in this playthrough. Again, I'm absolutely nowhere near a perfect landing, so it's telling me, sorry, you failed that mission again. So if you can get a perfect landing, then you can then save up the game, and I definitely recommend that. And then you get the first proper mission, the second mission of the game. We've been fitted with a quad space drive, so the objective is to fly out and to test out our quad drive. Let's fly out beyond those markers again, and by pressing S we can select the solar chart, of which this is a massive galaxy, it might remind us of Elite once again, 
and you can see you can zoom in and out as well and there are various markers on the screen wolf 359 and all the planetary systems near us are on there it's not a system accurate map but you can see Sol is there and proximity century and all that you can change the picture and the yaw and the zoom and everything else on this systems map that we're on at the moment but we don't have to worry about any of the systems at this point i'm not quite sure whether we're going to need to fly to any of those systems in this game but for the most part we're supposed to find the solar system and there it is and if we take that off and put that back on again hopefully that will bring us out of the solar system here it is with the sun in the middle of it and if we click on that it will tell us where that is and that will then highlight that in the navicom and then we can fly to that destination using our quad drive and so let's select earth the problem use the quad drive motors and by pressing q you can select that so now here we are in the vicinity of earth and there's the moon and there's the earth and it's simply a matter of flying somewhere using the quad drive and now that we've used that it will give us hopefully a message to say that that's all done fmo let's press the message button again and that will print out on the screen congratulations that's this mission done and now what we need to do is to return back to that soul base so let's bring up the navi computer again select that press q again and that means that we're back near the soul base so pws proceed with that mission or proceed with scenario and so the first thing to do is to find the soul base and if you bring up the tactical display that will bring up the navigation so that we can actually find that there it is so if we scout around here using the mouse hopefully that will show up from distance there it is and that won't show up unless you've got the tactical display selected so now that we've found that make sure that we're in the right drive mode because there's 1600 miles to get there 16,000 meters or whatever that might be and so let's speed on through and hopefully not skip directly past it and it's very easy to do that with this control system luckily the game does not expect us to conduct an absolute perfect landing at the soul base after you've done the first mission we can directly fly towards it and we can land directly in there or we can crash into it like this don't forget you can only save the mission once you've returned to that soul base so this is us doing it all over again and this time hopefully if you hang around the entrance to the soul base it will pick us up automatically and that means that the mission is successful we don't have to worry about the markers we just have to get in there and hope that we can trigger that automatic sequence so that's pretty difficult because that's flying around and so you don't have to worry about a vent to get through a slot that you have to fly through just aim directly for that hub in the middle and eventually if you are somewhere near it being very careful not to fly into any of its arms then you'll hopefully get that animation of us you can see we're flying down and forwards and yes there it is that gives us a random animation of us now entering that soul base and um, because we tested out the quad drive that's that mission complete now it's time to press that help key and save it up before we see our new orders so the purpose of this mission is to familiarize yourself with the stinger so you're supposed to quad out to demos or demos whatever that is and look at that gives us some weapons and that means that we can now proceed with that mission and demos let's type that in with the navicom and let's see if it finds that and I'm not sure where that is but that's where it is let's go it's 
fire at will. So all we need to do now is to figure out where we're going. You can see we're heading backwards now if you put on the star display. So let's press 9 and get that locked on. Now we can bring up our tactical and press the button for firing those. And all we need to do is to fire those off, I think. And that will complete this mission. So these missions really do tick off really quickly if you know what to do. So what is there? There is something on that horizon. It's a tech ship that's been detected. Let's fly towards that tech ship because maybe we're supposed to blow that up. No idea, but let's fly towards it anyway. And making sure that we're on the right drive mode because if we're moving too quickly, then this thing will scoot straight past. This is not speeded up. This is real time footage that you can see. I'm simply skipping past all the bits where I failed, which was numerous. So we're now flying directly around it. So let's stop again by pressing the 9 key on that keypad. And so the Newtonian physics involved in this game definitely has to be mastered. So let's fly towards this. And it seems like there are two things that are hanging around. One of them has got a circle around it and the other one has got a square around it. The square one is something that is indestructible and the circle one is a ship. So the aim of this mission is actually to fire our missiles into the asteroid, I think. And that's supposed to be a floating asteroid floating around. And again, that reminds us of Elite. So pressing the T button to bring up the tactical screen. And there is also a missile screen here. We can watch that to see those missiles zooming around, I think. So we're supposed to be locking on, I think, to the asteroid, which is indestructible. And if we launch all of the stingers towards that, you can see all of the F keys that we need to press to select those weapons. <laughs> Having done that, we can launch them towards the asteroid. We don't have any more missiles to fire, that means we can return back to base, and yes, it's as easy as that. seem to be going backwards at the moment and it takes some time sometimes to slow down the ship so finally we've stopped and it's always a good idea to do that and now we can head on back to that sole base so if you didn't know that you had to blow up that asteroid which I only found out through trial and error then you certainly do now this game is definitely a trial and error game it's just fantastic that we got have to go through the trials of lining ourselves up every single time so the soul base, as soon as we've done that mission, it will say, congratulations, you've done that bit, now we can move on to the next one. And the weapons test is now successful, we can fire missiles now, and we can use the quad drive. So the mass driver cannon has been installed, and so you're going to have to fly out to Venus and test it. And of course all we need to do is to press that space bar and it will fire that directly out into space. I'm not sure again if we need to target anything. Having done that, we'll then get a message that says, yep, you fired that weapon, now fly back to the soul base. 
So we've flown out to Venus and we've tested what passes for a laser in this game by pressing that spacebar a few times and now we can get back. So you can see under the surface of this game it's pretty easy once you get through that very first train mission to fly out to different scenarios, test out different weapons and the game will gradually, after that massive learning curve, it will then gradually introduce us to every single weapon and every single key on the keyboard until we're familiar with those and then I think after level 10 it gives us some proper missions that we can fly and we'll be getting to that mission in this playthrough but certainly we'll be going through those training missions and by the time you've got through all of these training missions you should be an absolute expert at landing at the soul base because you should have done it a billion times by the time you get this far so we've now tested that out that's fine you've failed to complete the mission successfully ah if you fly somewhere else and you don't fly directly back to the soul base then it will come up as a failure so you'll have to fly directly back we can't explore the universe and it will come up as a failure if we don't follow those missions by the book so anti-missile weapon the mdc so we're gonna have to test that out now so we've got that fitted we're now having to test that out we've got a sortie to Io which I think is one of the moons around Jupiter let's test that out and Ganymede and Callisto and all these ones or planets we can find the right one or simply type that in don't forget we can just type that in if we can't find which one it is Io and it will go there so that's now locked into the navicom so we can now quit this screen and we can quad jump all the way out there you can see we can zoom all the way in having reached our destination we can see there is something on that horizon what is it well if we press space on that it will tell us what it is and this thing i think is a trader and the PRM you can use by pressing the escape key the PRM is actually the escape module that you can press if you get into trouble having tested out the PRM by pressing the escape key around aisle yes that's all you have to do then we will automatically dock back at the star base Without having to do anything and it will say congratulations you've now learned to press the escape key and eject if you get into trouble so yeah we can do that we can now use the escape pod and i'm not sure whether that was in elite so on to the next mission so this is your first active service mission and it's simply a patrol we'll need to fly out to mercury and do some data gathering Hopefully now we'll be familiar enough with this ship to be able to fire off the missiles and to fly this thing around the universe. So the problem is with this one, it's just a sortie mission. We'll need to fly around and protect this area and if there's anything which attacks us, we can then destroy it. You can see we've got 14 of those Stinger missiles and if we put this on autopilot one it should jet us through space very very quickly and i've never encountered an enemy on this patrol simply a patrol through space and eventually once you fly close enough to mercury it will say well i haven't encountered anything that's the mission done so you can fly straight back to the soul base so this game definitely has hidden depths to it but you won't be seeing many of those on this playthrough 
what you'll be seeing is the first training missions and I always thought these were impossible until I figured out how to play this game so I haven't encountered anything that's fine fly back to the soul base then that's another mission completed and so finally after half an hour of playing this game we've got through the first half of the training missions and from now on we're gonna have to attack things and we're gonna have to figure out how to use all our armaments And so the point of a patrol is to establish if there are enemy hostiles in the area. We didn't find any, so there are some explained sensor damage in Triton space, so let's fly off to Triton, and Neptune Outpost demands a patrol of Triton space. Before we set off on each mission we'll be loaded up with weapons and that's great to see those weapons piling up and any medals that we've accumulated along the way and then we can get out to that area of space and we're our, on our own at the moment, we're completely on our own so let's stop the vehicle again with 14 stinger missiles so we're in the vicinity and you definitely have to read the mission briefs before you go through that mission, otherwise you'll be flying around completely blind. So I've got the tactical display on, there's nothing showing up as far as I can see. Oh, something's just beamed in. It's heading towards us and we're going to have to blow this thing up. And ICM is flashing, that means there's incoming missiles. We can fly towards the ship or simply wait for it to get to us but either way we'll eventually encounter it and then having done so the stinger missile should lock on to that target. And that's a failed opportunity, we seem to have crashed directly into that, so let's try that again, let's load up all the armaments again, fly out to that space, and so it's Triton space, let's do it again, and sometimes that's the art of this game, playing missions over and over, and then it's a great feeling once you complete them, and you never have to go through them again, as long as we've saved our progress, so let's quad jump out of there, and back to Triton space again and let's try in Triton let's try to blow that thing up This game was developed by Glyn Williams and he started out with Cholo on the 64 and all those 8-bit systems in 1987 that was published by Firebird, the same company as Elite, and that was like a mercenary clone, so if you find Cholo you'll find the ancestor of this game. And now we've blown up that ship. Hopefully that's it, congratulations on your first kill, return to that store base. And there was an official unofficial sequel to this game called XF5700, whatever that means, Mantis Experimental Fighter which appeared for the DOS platform in 92, but Glyn Williams was nothing to do with XF5700 Mantis Fighter and so you'll have to wait until a few years later when I War came out, otherwise known as Independence War, the Starship Simulator, which was coded by Glyn Williams. It came out on the Windows platform in 1998. And if you like I War, which is just like this game, then he also coded Independence War 2, which came out for Windows and DOS in 2001.
So there are lots of games out there with heritage, and a lot of the comments on the Lemon Amiga website complain that one of the later missions, known as Berserker, required us to do something impossible, and it wasn't possible to complete. But if you fly into the black hole with the Berserker chasing you on the Berserker level, then you'll gain a cutscene and you can quad jump out of the black hole and that completes that mission. So the Berserker mission is possible and players who've completed this game all the way through gave it a good score. This came on one disc, it came out, well it was developed in 89 and it came out in 1990. So it's an early game and fully 3D of course and it requires a triple O processor. I think that's what I'm playing this on at the moment. So it's fast and it's fluid and it's got everything there and apart from the very first mission which is utterly confusing and very difficult indeed, this thing definitely deserves some respect and definitely deserves some appreciation. Right now you can see hopefully a perfect approach to the star base. Yes, I can do perfect approaches, having done it a billion times now. So let's see, putting this on basically automatic and flying that in slowly. Let's see if we can turn that into reality. The markers are disappearing now. So hopefully if we press space on the very last marker, that will be the hub itself. You can see the range is ticking down and that's the last marker. So that's now the soul base. You can see we're crawling down at a slow speed. This is what you have to do to complete the first mission. Everything's lined up directly in the middle like this. And you can see that we're not moving too quickly and we're not having to do anything. This is a hands-off landing. And then we'll get the absolute perfect approach, the absolute perfect landing. And that's how you complete that first mission. Right now we've got a debriefing, the vessel you destroyed was a small drone craft, it's been recognised as a vessel of the Syrian aliens, okay, well that means that we can now go into our computer and find out what it was, and so data gathering probe, that was it, and that's the stats, and you can see it flying around, that's pretty interesting, Corsair, tech ship, fighter, super freighter, and so these are the ships that you'll find in the game. You will have to escort some of these on some of these missions. Some of these will be seek and destroy missions. And so we're now going on a sortie to Triton. There are a number of alien intruders. Let's fly out there and sort them out. There are a number of scenarios, you'll have to fight the Berserker and you'll also have to f search and rescue people as well that have got lost and escort and destroy things and things like that, so that's fine, but at the moment we're being attacked. see our missiles travelling around in a circle and they're supposed to lock on to the enemy. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And we're using our laser at the moment to knock out the enemy missiles and that ICM is still there. That's a blast. That's another knockout but we've still got an enemy to destroy. So I do have respect for this game, after all these years trying it, every year trying to learn it, I definitely have respect for this game, and it's definitely remembering all those keyboard commands that make this possible, and using the mouse it's not too bad. 
but the magazine reviews, some of them couldn't even get off the first level, so that's why Meek Joker gave this a very measly 48%, and Datto Magazine gave this 80%, Lemon Amiga awarded Warhead 81%, Amiga Format gave it 88 the Kim's Machine gave this 90 Ace gave it 92 The One gave it 93 and CU Amiga also gave this 93%. So if it wasn't for the Amiga Joker, bringing this down, this would have got easily maybe 8.5 or even 9 out of 10. But that Amiga Joker score brings this down, unfortunately, to 8 out of 10. You can see we're still struggling to line up and as long as we are lined up then that's fine and it's very difficult sometimes when you go offline but it's a lot easier than Elite. Hopefully if we just march straight in there just like this we don't have to judge a gap. So hopefully getting inside the space station is a bit easier. You can see we're falling all over the place, it doesn't really matter as long as we get inside. Well done, you have not only succeeded in your mission, but you've also gathered some more data. So we've found the A-Wing, not the X-Wing fighter, not the Y-Wing, but we've found A-Wing. A-Wing, so let's have a look at the A-Wing. And so this isn't ripped off from Star Wars at all, it's one of these things that looks like a Viper. And it's got a basic attack, crewed by 256 insects, and it's thrust value. So not that really gives us much information but it does give us some information so this is as far as I've got with this game and I never really got any further than this I've basically recorded this for this play guide so I hope now that you can see how to control this game and this vast vast galaxy that you can pilot around and after you've got through these missions then you're on your own blowing up enemies using a quad drive to jump around and using all of those weapons that will learn how to fire. Hopefully this has given you a heads up to the game, definitely save it after the first mission and then you'll never have to do that pilot test again. So thank you Set, for recommending and sponsoring this review and hopefully I'll see you in another play guide and review sometime soon. Thank you.